just coming up live now. Perfect, and we are live, he says confidently, as I'm gonna pull up the comment page very quickly. Good evening, everybody. Okay, I'm just putting up the comments. Good, good evening, everybody that's, that's, that's joining us tonight. Um, I can see people jumping on as, as, as we speak, but I'm gonna get started pretty quickly. Okay, um, so welcome to Wednesday evening, eight o'clock. This is the business meeting. Um, tonight, I'm uh, very pleased to say that I'm joined by Neil Williams from Chicane Security. Sorry, Neil, um, for Chicane Security. I'm all tongue-tied. It's been a long day of doing videos and lives and meetings and stuff, so I do apologize. Um, so Neil is here, and he is going to talk to us about his journey, um, what his company does, how he's got to where he is, um, the journey, his ethos and such like that. Um, and if you've got questions as we go along the way, guys, then please do, do let us know. Um, I'll see them in the comments, and I'll, I'll ping them over to Neil. Um, I don't want to waffle on too much, because I know I do that already far too much. Um, so I'm just going to dive straight into it and get started. So, um, Neil, do you want to introduce yourself, say hello to everyone, tell us what it is that you do, how the company works, what your company delivers and such like that? Okay, so hi, everybody. My name's Neil Williams. Obviously, the company is called Chicane Security. Um, the website is chicanesecurity.co.uk. Um, I live in Shrewsbury, born and bred, um, and I basically launched this company last year. Well, the company was actually set up last year and actually, and then launched in January this year, just in time for COVID, obviously. Um, but it basically <laughs> takes care of all of the... That was good, that was good business planning, launched just in time for, yeah, for COVID. Yeah, nice quiet period to start with, right? Um, so basically, it's, it covers only for all of your antivirus, your internet security, your firewall security, um, all the way through to, to SIP pen testing and providing a service to, to look after people while they're online. So would you, would you say you deal more with um, corporates or more with consumers like individuals, B2B or B2C? Well, what I'm actually looking to do is, is, is more consumer and small to medium businesses is what I'm look, looking for and trying to look after, if I'm honest with you, because the, that's, the, that's the part of the market that seems to be getting left behind because everybody wants to fo focus on the, the big corporates and the, enter and the enterprise yeah. solutions um, and obviously the major companies. So. The, the small company and the man that works from home and, and the people that's just trying to look after their family, you know, watching what they do on, and don't do on the internet, that tends to get left behind. So that's that's my sort of objective, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, and and I mean, I, I'm kind of curious because I've I've been in um, different different businesses, some some of my own and, and, and some others, and I've I've been in internet in, I've been in an internet business before. How did you get into this? Because it's quite a almost a specialized role it's quite a skill set isn't it internet security yeah uh, my background is as i come from a logistical background where there was x amount of dealings with the internet and the and websites and what have you um i was given the opportunity to go and work over in africa <clears throat> excuse me which which i was there for seven and a half years and during that time was was all based you with with installing cctv access control systems and then doing network upgrades to accommodate our our technology um, and it just basically grew from there. And then when I came home February last year, um, I thought, right, let's let's run let's run with this because this was what was evolving. So lots of study, lots of research, and then said, right, let's go for it. And and, and I think that's a brave move because because this is the bit that I that, that I love. And as, as we were just chatting but before we went live about this, I'm really I, I get really passionate. I get really curious about what it is that drove you to want to work for yourself rather than taking the skill set you had and going and getting a job for somebody else doing that effectively. I like to manage my own time and I like to I love providing a service and giving solutions that you can actually see the benefit from the end user or the client. Where is if you're working for someone, you don't always see that. You might get a little bit of the feedback or involvement with it, but to actually be able to provide that and work with the people on the initial solution and then working long long term with it, that that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I just love I love working for myself, um, and obviously providing solutions that's going to suit everybody and, and put a smile on their face and keep them safe. Yeah, no, no, that makes a lot of sense. And when you came, when when you started work yourself, was there a, a an area of I guess, anticipation or was an area of, of kind of worry or concern in terms of go, going it alone, setting up, and especially because you're, you are competing with some really big players as well in terms of internet security. 
yeah, there's a lot of companies out there doing it. Absolutely. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm a miracle worker and I'm going to be the best <laughs> of the best and what have you. I'm not going to say that at all. I'm not going to sort of say that the other guys are, are no good and what have you, because there's some wonderful people out there. Um, but basically, you know, what got me to start with, if I'm honest with you, Joel, it was, it was, I was very apprehensive because there's so many people out there doing it. And there's some, like I said, some great guys. But I just saw this niche where, you know, like I say, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the small man on the street, the sole trader, the small companies, the startup companies, they're kind of a bit nervous about how to go about this, what they need and, yeah. and, and how to look after themselves. So that's why I thought, that's why I thought, right, let's go for this, that, that niche in the market uh, or that section of the market and, and see what we can do. And, and I think that's the that's the thing about entrepreneurs that I find is that innovation piece. I've, I've yet to meet an entrepreneur that doesn't innovate, that doesn't find, like you say, a niche in the market or doesn't see a area that they can step into or an area they can add value to and do something different. And, and very much what you're saying there is you, you've recognized the niche and, and, and the market in, in sort of the SMEs of being able to step into that world. And, yeah. and, and I would say my company falls into there as well because we don't, <laughs> this will sound really bad now we don't have internet security per se obviously we use <gasps> well we do we do we, we, we use apple products you know we use apple products or protected um uh, no he's max um but we we obviously use microsoft 365 so there's a there's a number of systems in there but we we have um and it was only she's going to kill me for saying this um but we have been um uh we have had one of our email accounts, one of our one of our senior managers actually had their email account switched off by Microsoft because they had an email come through, a spam email. They clicked on a link, um, and sure enough, it, it took them to a loading page. They inputted their login details, um, and, and sure enough, somebody then had access to their email and inadvertently can actually access some of their files and systems. And yeah. um, thankfully, Microsoft shut it down very very quickly. They contacted us and were able to deal with it, but that was very much down to uh, kind of user error because like I say they had they had an email which was which was spam um, and they responded to it and they did that and I guess there must be a range of companies I know lots of other businesses that don't use things like Microsoft 365 they still use Gmail and stuff like that yeah um, and that gets bombarded on a on an hourly basis if I'm honest with you yeah um, the same with the, the likes of Yahoo and what have you yeah um, the standalone Yahoo email addresses I'm talking about and it that's the sort of the, the week. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got I've got a personal one of those. Yeah, um, but I mean, it, it, it does baffle me when people use their, their personal u email or their like a Gmail account for their business utilization. Yeah. Um, because that. that is the weak link because it is yeah. getting hammered all the time. And then the other thing is the human error side of things is the weak link with internet security or cyber security because if you open an email and think, oh, that looks lovely, and then you click on it, and the next minute you you don't know what's going on type thing, you know, or you wonder why your bank account's been emptied or, you know, where's all your files gone? That's, that's the, the issue. Though. Yeah. And, and no, I, I totally see that. And I think for, for us, for us as a company, I never really gave it, uh, not, I didn't give it attention, but I didn't give it enough seriousness as, as I needed to. And, and off the back of um, one of our staff actually having that happen to them, that, that then prompted me to say, hold on, there's, there's first of all a training issue here. So first yep. of all, emails went out to everybody to say, don't do this. This is the type of thing to watch out for. Um, yeah. And then obviously we had to start looking at the processes and more of the internet security, because again, behind the scenes, not just the emails, but that access in the Microsoft world gives you access to all the internal files or your IP or your copyright information or your, but everything mm. kind of can span off that. So it does, it does become really important. I think people spend mm. a lot of money um, protecting themselves with IP and copyright and, and stuff like that, but potentially not enough in, in actually the, um, uh, IT services side. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's, it is worthwhile training people on how to use, how to spot a, a suspicious email because not everything goes straight to your spam folder, of course. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, the good, th the one good thing about modern day internet usage is now the government's picked up on this alongside the, the National Cyber Security Centre, yeah. and they've set up various different things where you, that, that can help the man on the street as well as the, the large large enterprises. Um, for one, it was, it was advertised on TV. If you get a suspicious email, you can send it across, send that email across to phishing at gov.uk. 
and then the cyber security team within the government will actually follow that up and shut it down which is fantastic and again that's something i'm not aware of it's it's something i don't know about and i like to say that i'm generally quite up to date with stuff so it it, it always concerns me if i if i haven't heard of it or seen it on social media or somewhere around or always worried about other businesses that won't And, and traditionally I tend to deal with businesses that are slightly smaller than that. So it tends, tends to sort of be the way in business. I think you tend to deal with, with quite regularly slightly smaller businesses as, as you grow. And um, I, I speak with so many different people and I know just, just like us as a company don't have um, system security in place to a high enough level. We say, yeah, it's fine. We've got Microsoft, or we've got Apple and we can't get hacked and stuff like that. But actually um, I find, like I say, as soon as you put the person into the mix, that's when actually the risk is. Yeah, it, and the thing is, is not not everything is expensive these days with regard to protecting yourself as a as a, a small, medium, large business, or even at home. The 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 way that all of the different um, providers are actually improving themselves these days is is phenomenal, and things are changing on a week to week basis where they're adding a layer, they're adding something different. Um, so it doesn't actually cost a fortune anymore to protect yourself online. Yeah. Obviously, it is an additional cost, don't get me wrong, but it's not something that's going to break the bank anymore like it used to be sort of five, ten years ago, you know? Yeah, but I think I think if you had to weigh up, and I, and I always look at things like there's always a cost in, in, in terms of different services, but when you yeah. look at the, the downside potentially, if somebody hacked into your system or, or somebody breached into your system and actually took stuff down or, or stole data, I saw, I think it was EasyJet, had 10,000... Uh, yeah, two days ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the idea that if, if that happened to us as a small company, it, it could be absolutely devastating because it's all about our brand and, and, and looking after people's security. And obviously, with ICO memberships, with, with the Information Commissioning Office, if you breach those rules and regulations, they can come down on you pretty pretty hard. Yeah, they're severe fines, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, it, it's not just the emails, it's the different types of ransomware now and the different types of malware that, that come through by WhatsApp, SMS, and obviously email. It, it's it's increasing, and it's it's since COVID nineteen, they're they're trying to sort of play themselves off as part of the health service. Let's say where they yeah. send us your information, and we'll see if you can get a test or say you know click on this link to help with funding for the NHS off the back of people like you know uh, Captain Tom Moore and, and all of those different fundraisers. They're all trying to piggyback off the back of that. And it's coming through all sorts of different channels and platforms, and it's it's quite, it's quite worrying. Though. Yeah, and and you know, it's really interesting and and, and um, uh, timely that you say that because this morning when we went live um, uh, with Women Prison Lives, so we set up the event page as per normal, and twenty minutes before we went live, it got spam filled with just lots of different accounts saying go live, click on click on this link, and it had yeah. our picture from the event and from our Facebook page. It had different pictures saying click on this link. Yeah. And we didn't even notice until we went live and people started reporting it. And you clicked on the link, you filled out your details, it asked for your bank details, and that was it. And 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 it was a link to nothing other than just giving your bank details. And yeah. we had people, we had people go onto our live that gave that bank details and then spent the next hour and a half cancelling bank cards. And yeah. for us, we just couldn't believe it. We were absolutely gobsmacked. And it was completely out of our control. Um, so yeah. the intelligence in terms of um I guess internet security and what people can actually do is is almost mind-boggling in the sense of the abilities they have. Um, yeah, the, the guys that do actually will try and hack you. I mean, there's, there's, there's millions of them around the globe, let's be honest with you. And some are quite sort of sly, some are quite sensitive, and some are just literally in your face with the ransomware. It's it's many. It's got many guys, so you just need... My only advice to everybody is just be as careful as you can and don't trust anything. And if there's anything on the internet that looks too good to be true, it generally is. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, that's that's something I, I abide by as well. If, if if there's a deal that looks too good to be true, it almost certainly is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Don't, yeah. Don't think it's yeah. Click on this link and you'll get a Ferrari and a million pounds. No, I won't. <laughs> and, and actually, as, as the same for um, because I'm, I'm going to come back to some things uh, about you in terms of how how you how you drove forward into the insurance company. But there's been a number of things recently with. Um, uh, other business gurus and such talking about how if you buy our course, if you do this or you do that, you'll you'll make this much money and, and join us. Yeah. We'll show how to be an Amazon seller and stuff like that. And there's been a raft of people calling them out actually since since lockdown. People jumping on and actually uh, doing it and investigating. Going, no, what you're saying is absolutely rubbish and really calling them out. And I think that's quite important because unfortunately there are people out there that, that see things that are too good to be true and they think that's going to happen and they they buy into it and they get duped into it. 
Yeah, that's it. And if people are using one, let's say, channel to, to try and promote stuff, to get money out of you, to, to, to do whatever, and if they're not actually what, the, what they're saying the internet industry is taken down, they're going to open up a second one once they've got a nice revenue stream to afford the second one. And then obviously yeah. that gathers pace and then it's three, four, five, six, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And then it forms different guises. So, yeah, it's 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 worthwhile sort of reporting things like this, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree with that. Um, now, look, I've, I've, we've spoken a little bit about that. We obviously spoke about you, you going to work for yourself. Was there a time that you would say in your life that you looked at this and went, I'm going to work for myself? Have you always felt you were going to start your own business, your own company? Or was it something that kind of just sort of happened? Yeah, I worked within, the, I, I was self-employed a few years ago. God almighty, it's got to be 12 years ago now within the logistics industry. Um, I basically... I wasn't really enjoying that, so so I let that pass by. And then, I, like I say, I went out to Africa for a few years. And the thought of coming back and taking a job was just a non-starter. And my wife will tell you, if I'd have taken the job, I'd have been bored within six months. And that's why I was like, right, let's do something that's I can work for myself, but obviously take the time to to make sure it's the right thing and do it in the right way. Yeah. And, and and again, this is this is always difficult. I, I personally never find this too hard, but lots of people I do that I speak to do, which is the financial side of the situation. Lots of people don't like to talk about the financial side, but was there a was there an element for you? There must have been an element for you that sort of looked at it financially and said, "How are we going to be? Will we be okay? How's this going to work?" Yeah, you have to because you can't set a business up on on say ten pounds, can you? It's yeah. it's. This is why part of the, the research we did into the company was how much is it going to cost? How much is it going to take to run it? As well as looking after our own bills, mortgage and, and our own lifestyle. So, yeah, we looked at that a, a lot, a lot. Yeah, because it's, it's fine. And I, I Again, I, I see and hear it a lot. And I know a lot of other people do. You, you see successful people, different business people, and, that, and they'll talk about how, um, you know, you have to take the hit at first. You have to, you know, potentially work yeah. a job and work a business and, and build it. Um, but the ultimate reason is you have to live as well. I think with with, with yeah. lots of people that have just started businesses I speak to, I know that they're always, they're very nervy to sort of say, well, I need to have some money so I can actually live and, and sort of make that work. I'm like, you shouldn't be. You you need to be able to live as, as anybody else. It's about how yeah, how, how much you need. Do you need the Ferrari now or do you need it in, in, in 20 years time? It's, it's just about sort of planning for short term and long term really isn't it and then making sure that you're looking after your business and your family there's no point selling yourself short because otherwise you may as well you may as well just take a job and, and live nicely yeah furloughed or not um but i mean don't get me wrong there was there was times where you think right okay you know we can we can do this we can do that and it would be lovely to be sat here talking to you now joel in a, in a lovely office in battlefield that's all kitted out and yeah. all the best kit and you know the height the top technology but everything takes time to build and is you know slow, slowly slowly as they say is is the best key as far as i'm concerned and so you you know you're at that next level with your client base and obviously the the financials that go with it yeah it, it, it absolutely again i couldn't agree more it's about i guess looking at that that stage of as a business owner when is it you cash in how much do you replow back into the business for the growth when do you bring on additional staff yeah. Um, and, and, you know, when, when are you in a position where you can go, oh, I'm going to take some money out of this so I can start doing these things? And it, it's a difficult balance, isn't it? It, it, it is. And it's, it's, it's pretty much choosing the right time with the right expenditure for yourself without breaking the bank and putting yourself into serious debt. And that's something I'm not willing to do for, for myself with, with the business or for my family. I'm not willing to put myself or them in that position. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, I could spend a lot more money on the business, but yeah. I think there's, I mean, Joel, you've had a look at the website. There's enough on there to to provide a a one-off purchase or, or a package for, for, for someone. There's more than enough there to take care of the, anybody and everybody, so there's no point trying to overload it with that extra expenditure and, and utilisation for, for no reason at this time. Yeah, and, you, and I, was, I was... I guess I was probably a, li a little bit taken back when, when we when we first connected and I looked through your website and saw how much you actually offer from internet security <laughs> through domain names, through hosts. I'm just looking at now, cloud storage servers, personal data storage, businesses, consumers. It's, it's a huge, I, I guess a huge spectrum, a, a wide range of products that you deliver. Um, but the, re the reason or the ethos behind that is somebody might say, right, I've had that 
antivirus in the past. I don't want to go there again. Yeah. Oh, look, Neil's got it on the, on the chicane website. Oh, I don't want to go with them again. So if you've only got that one, you may be turning business away. Yeah. So if you've got two or three options or four options, then you're giving people that choice with good products. I'm not, I, I, you, you've probably seen on the website, there's, they're all good upstanding products. They've all won Gartner awards and various um, industry awards. So it's all good stuff on there. I won't, I won't have anything else. Yeah, and I guess you have to in, in your industry. You have to have obviously a well. You, your industry will be regulated anyway, but it's it's like yeah. you say the standard, the ISO standards and stuff like that. So yeah. um, you have to have. And again, I know from from past experience, just getting ISO registrations and regulations in order can cost huge amounts of money. It takes a lot of time, and um, and again, when you're competing with with big companies that have almost unlimited budgets and legal teams and development teams, it's yeah. I guess that can feel like an uphill struggle for. Yeah, it can, and it can it, it can lead you down a path of, of no return if you want to actually follow it with, the, like you say, the different ISOs and the you know the GDPR and the compliance and the governance and everything. You could you could spend your life doing just that, never mind running a business. You know, it, it's 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 incredible, but it's good. Don't get me wrong, it's good. Is is something that's curious to me, and again, it's, it's something I don't know. I know very little about it. I haven't really done any research into it. You you just you just brought it to the forefront of my mind. How will leaving the EU affect a lot of the regulations, like GDPR, for example, which was brought in very much as kind of an EU regulation? How do you see that us leaving the EU, those those sort of effects happening? From and I'm not a specialist on GDPR, but I know yeah. people that, that I, I, I work with, and they I lean on them for for my advice and guidance if I need to. Um, but I don't think it will change that much, as I understand it. it will just be more tailored to the uk but if you're if you're just working and trading within the uk there won't be a great deal of change but obviously obviously if you've got some kind of um infrastructure and trading and business in the eu and further afield then obviously yeah it becomes a lot more complicated yeah and i'm not 100 sure of those i'm not going to answer something i don't know to be honest yeah with you, no, that, that makes absolutely well, I can sense. certainly ask the question on the guys I work alongside with that regard. Um, they'll be able to tell you in an instant. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's a great thing to have, isn't it? Again, I, I say to people quite, quite regularly when I speak to different people, it's about having a resource network around you, somebody you can almost pull on if you don't know the answer to, to, to find the answer out. Again, it becomes so important to me. And, and again, we were obviously talking about networks before this, about having different networks of, of people yeah. for sharing business, but also sharing ideas, concepts, asking advice and support questions and stuff like that and that's one of the things that helped with pushing this uh with pushing chicane as a business with some of the people i've actually become um good associates good associates with and, and actually sort of, sort of operate within a network now um are actually brilliant people great at what they do um and it's a constant source of information i call them up for a, a bit of advice or information and they do the same with me and it, it's it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant yeah, no, I think that's I think that's really important. So, again, I'm a big advocate of businesses and 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 um, uh, company owners, directors, and stuff like that, staff sharing ideas and stuff. And I think the more you can the more you can share it actually is 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 really beneficial as opposed to holding stuff and you we're not going to share that because it's ours. And if you have it, you might come. <laughs> yeah, it's my toy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, the inter the internet has changed that world though, isn't it? Because literally, you can go on and you can find anything. I, I'm always amazed when people say oh this this is a fact i'm like i bet i can go onto google and find somebody that counteracts that fact and challenges it and there's you can just tap anything into google these days it's a um, non-stop discussion point isn't it yeah, absolutely look I'm, I'm really curious because again again this is something i i, I really like to know and understand from people are you somebody that sets yourself lots of goals very specific goals very um sort of smart yeah. goals as, as they would say or are you somebody that kind of just goes with sort of the flow it's uh... Before COVID kicked in, it was pretty much go with the flow, but there were targets. Yeah. Um, COVID's now kind of changed that. It's sort of sit back a little bit, um, but still kind of pushing and what have you behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the targets are there. If I can achieve the targets that, that I've set for myself for, for, for this financial year, um, I'll be very, very happy. But if with what's going on, if I don't achieve them, then it's kind of take the bullet and set more targets for next year 
yeah, it's a, it's a difficult time. I guess that brings us on quite 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 smoothly into in, into COVID nineteen and how that's really affected, I guess your your business because some businesses have been absolutely hammered, others have excelled, um, and and others have just kind of continued. I mean, we're we're completely closed, so we've got no income whatsoever. <laughs> we've just stopped. Um, it, it is, yeah, it, it's but you know it, that is what it is. And I was chatting to, to to a friend yesterday who works in a health and safety company, a huge huge multinational conglomerate. Um, and they're, they're churning more money than they've ever churned before in sales because people need that support and they're doing lots of risk yeah. assessments and cautious with um, uh, around COVID. So they've really got that corner of the market. How, how have you found uh, um, the lockdown and COVID? Has that affected you? Um, well, I, as I mentioned, I, I launched the company at the end of January this year. So there's only like three or four weeks of networking and, and getting the company known yeah. before we were put on lockdown. Um, but I have gained contracts. They are on, but they're on hold until this is over. You know, everyone is free to do what they want and lockdown's gone. Um, and obviously the people know that they've got the, the, the same kind of budgets and availability to do it. Um, so that's fantastic. So that, that's nice to sort of say, right, that's coming soon. Brilliant. Um, but for gaining new business and what have you, it has been slow because people are watching their money. They're, yeah. they're nervous about sort of investing in their business because let's be honest, a lot of people are, are they actually hundred percent sure their business is going to survive COVID? Yeah. And obviously the, the, they were saying on the, the news yesterday that there's, they're expecting a severe recession now. So it's a, it's like a double whammy, if you're honest with you. So the UK industry is, is being pretty, pretty much hit hard, isn't it? Yeah. And I think, I think when we come out of furlough, that's going to be a real telling sign because some businesses are okay now because of, of furlough. I mean, we, we're still, uh, we're, I think we're probably a decent example of it. We're still going through, you know, uh, nearly 20,000 pounds a month, um, every month. We're just, we're just going through that. We've mm. got the furlough obviously for, for the, for the staff we've got furloughed, um, but with no income coming in, ultimately there's, there's, there is a deadline of how long that money lasts. The last yeah. thing I want to have to do is, is, as you said earlier, is borrow money. Um, so desperately trying to get to a point where we can open without having to do that. Yeah. Um, but as soon as furlough stops and we reopen, if the market isn't there to drive the customer base and we can't pick up pretty much from where we left off, mm. then how do you pay all your bills? And I think a, a lot of companies are going to struggle at that stage, and especially leisure businesses. I think pubs and, 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 the, and the entertainment sector, music venues, you know, who, who rely on big numbers through the doors. Yeah. If they can't get those, but they've got to manage all of their payroll and all of their bills themselves, yeah. I just don't see how a lot of them are going to do it. And ba banks won't lend them money if they don't see them having a successful future. Which is a little bit of a kick in the teeth after everyone sort of salvaged the banks a few years ago, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah ab ab it's, ab it's, absolutely. It's, it's, this is a quandary. We're going to end up on a yeah. massive discussion there, aren't we? Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's terrifying times for, for a lot of businesses, like, you know, small, medium and large. It, it really is. Um, but let's just hope as many people in... in within the country can get through it and, and try and salvage and, and get on and continue as something as near normal as we can. And, and I, I assume to a degree that um, some of it must actually be, no, a benefit's the wrong word, but actually there's opportunities, I guess, uh, for, for different companies out of this. And, and potentially one for yours is the sense that people are now working from home. So some yeah. small SMEs are now having to think very, very quickly about security, about VPNs, about how they can, protect their company and their workers who are working on completely different networks, some on BT, some on Sky, some on Virgin, some completely yeah, unsecured, I should imagine. A lot of companies are looking to do that now because they realise that having everybody in the office isn't as important as they thought it was. Yeah. Or spending copious amounts of money on, on uh, company vehicles and all the insurances and the fuel and everything that goes with it when you can run something like this. And you can get ju it's just as productive as before. So yeah, a lot of people are looking at VPNs, um, firewalls, uh, cloud solutions, yeah, um, as well as updating what they've got at home to fall in line with what they've got in the office or with what's standard within the business, depending on the policies and procedures. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of it about, but sad sadly for me, I think I just about missed the the majority of it because everyone sort of end of January, beginning of February was getting that sorted because they knew that was coming. Yeah. You could, but if there's anybody out there that hasn't got it done, give me a call. Yeah. So I'm just saying what's, what's 
<laughs> Someone's talking prison life. We're not in that today. It's fine. It's behind, it's behind me. But I've only, I've only put the prison up, as Neil knows. I put the prison up because behind me is just an unplastered wall. Um, so, um, bring me back onto that. I, I, again, I'm really curious as to as to, as, as to your why, um, and 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 that's something I, I obviously talk about a lot. Your your why, your kind of reason behind doing what you do. Um, what, what what does that look like for you? What is it that drives you? Why? Um... I would love to say why not, but that'd be wrong. No, um, no I, th I think I think that's a I, I think that's a great answer. It's just what else am I going to do? <laughs> no, <laughs> not that. I just that's just a bit of a pun. Um, why? I I like doing this work. If I'm honest with you, I I yeah. do like working on uh, with, with various things on the internet. Um, I love give, to be able to give a solution and uh, some kind of well, a solution and a package. If, if possible, to someone that's that's going out of their mind, doesn't know which way to turn, and then in the end of it, they, they're happy and they're content, and they can carry on with their normal family life or their business life. It's that's what I enjoy. Love networking with people, love meeting new people, um, love working with the providers that I've got on board, and otherwise, yeah, this it's something that I actually enjoy doing, and it's yeah. Yeah, um, no, I, pretty I, much it to be honest, Joel. I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheels or talk. I, I can tell you, yeah. <laughs> I, I love all those kind of things. As, as I said to you, I could I could just do this all day. I could just chat to people about business and and all those kind yeah. of things all day. I, and I'd love to do that. I'd love if someone yeah. if someone out there wants to just pay me to do that. I'd, I'll give up my companies. No, but, <laughs> but the, idea, the other the other, the other benefit um, the other benefit for me as well is I've been working away for for a lot of my life and now doing this something I enjoy from home gives me more scope to do more things with my with the family that's I, just the, uh, that's the that's the seal of the deal let's say see and i think that's brilliant because i think one of the challenges is is, is, is as you'll know when you when you when you start your own company when it's you and you are you're the everything to everyone and everything you do type of stuff it can almost overtake your life and you tend to find you don't have um you don't have as much time for for your family and the other things so i think if you can find that that work-life balance that's that's brilliant i think that's absolutely fantastic I said to my wife the one day, this is my effort at multitasking, and she said, it's still not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I hear what she says in, in terms of, I know the amount of hours that I work, I know the amount of hours you must work, and I look at it again, uh, some people that work 37 and a half hours, 40 hours a week, and, 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 and they work really hard. And I look at that, I think, wow, do you know what, sometimes I'm really envious of, of that. Um, and then I remember my why. And that, and that that brings me back to what I, what I do and what I do. Yeah, I mean, my wife will tell you that some some weeks during um, since we've been since I've been home and obviously now that we, we're in lockdown, some weeks it's thirty to forty hours a week. Sometimes it could be yeah. seventy, eighty, ninety. It just depends. I mean, going just sort of touching back on part of the the question, what's happening during um, COVID and lockdown that I didn't quite get to is just doing research and product development and and training online with with the providers and i just once i get stuck into that and sometimes i can hear my wife going to bed and i think oh god god is that the time you know and it's it's you know it's one of those like but i enjoy doing that no i think i think that's it you 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 you've got to love um i, I guess you've got to love what you do in your business otherwise you, you're just not going to have the passion to do it i guess yeah, if I you haven't got that, that then you know, you may as well pack up and do something else yeah i can see the cars i can see that i think the form, formula one cars and is that I'm yeah yeah, yeah, formula old cars, ones, formula yeah. Cars. Is, is that a passion of yours formula one formula one and football yes very yeah. much yeah i'm missing both if i'm honest with you you watch the odd rerun of a, of a game or a race and what have you but there's yeah. nothing like the real thing is there yeah, because I think they're talking about they're talking about starting football in in different um, different leagues, but obviously some of it potentially behind closed doors and not having um, people in the stands for the Grand Prix and such like that. Yeah, football. It's a bit of a because there's a couple of leagues have already shut down. The Scottish yeah. Premier League and League Two have shut down. League One, the Championship, and the Premier League are still trying to sort out something moving forward, aren't they? But obviously, there's uh, was it yesterday or this morning there were six players found uh, tested positive. Sorry. Yeah. So now that's kind of put everything up in the air again. And the Formula One, I know they're aiming to do two races. They're aiming for the, the British Grand Prix, but they're going to try and set up a second one. And they're on about doing two Austra Austrian Grand Prix. Yeah. And then sort out the rest. So, look, if they can get the sports going again, wonderful. But if not, I think just knocking on the head for this season or this year and then do it when it's safe and, and proper to do so. 
Yeah, because I, I and I guess Formula One especially, but Formula One in football, there's I, I look at those sometimes. I think are they and, and I follow probably more a bit more Formula One than I do than I do football. Um, and I've had I've had more ties to it in the past, but um, they're, they're such massive businesses in their own rights. They're such yeah. huge. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just monstrous. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're absolutely massive. Some of the biggest That's businesses incredible. in the world. Yeah, um, absolutely. And they're, they'll absolutely be feeling the pinch as well, from the from the top end all the way to to the bottom. Um, yeah, yeah, because it's it's not just the the income from the fans; it's all the media and the sponsorships and the you know the knock ons and the bolt ons yeah, that yeah. go with it. it it's, it's it goes back to what you were saying regarding the hospitality and the the food and beverage industry. It's just it's it's one hell of a knock, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just it's it's all the other industries, like you say, that are involved in it all the way through um, food and beverage, and even transport, even the coach companies that will be selling tickets to take people to the games. Yeah. Um, I get you know local car parks, local pubs um, that that would normally be busy before and after games and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, right so, down to your man that's got the little cart selling the flags and the the scarves on yeah. the side of the entrance ways and what have you. Yeah. The streets. Yeah. It's, Trains. It's massive. Everything. Massive. Is, I guess it's that it's that complete knock-on effect that we don't quite appreciate when we look at it. Um, so we, we we tend to look at I know again I thought this trap. You tend to look at your own business and don't necessarily think of the wider picture of all the other businesses affected before customers even get to you. Yeah, um, if you so, did that, it'd be like a massive family tree that's just oh, sprawling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know when we assessed um, school markets, which is a big one for us, and we talk about that. I was like, well, hold on. If schools aren't coming to us, then coach companies aren't taking them from A to B and therefore they're missing out. And then suddenly that yeah. has an impact on fuel and has an impact on oil prices and have an impact on people doing uh, the mechanics. To, you know, it's, it's just the whole process, just suddenly it, you just see how everything is so interconnected. Yeah, um, it's it's fascinating, really. If you, you know, you do look at it like that, it's it, it just blows your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, I, 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 we're, we're getting towards the end. I don't want to bombard you with, with, with two more questions. I've got, I've got one that, I, again, I'm, I'm really keen to know. And for me, this is about journey or destination. Would you say you're more about sort of the end goal or the journey in terms of the journey. getting there? The journey. Yeah. Um, the de- what is the destination and what's the, the long-term plan for, for me and Chicane is is just to grow it. Yeah. Um, whatever time scale that takes, Um is what it what it's going to take whether i really hope that doesn't come across as sort of arrogant or, or whatever um but it's I, there's no rush to build the company there's no there's no final goal just try and build it and build it and grow it um if it takes a year if it takes 10 years if it takes 20 years then i'll be happy to just sit along and, and enjoy the ride uh, I, I personally I, I don't know how other people take it but personally i think that's absolutely brilliant because you're not putting huge amounts of, of, of pressure onto yourself or onto the business or to other people to to, to achieve it and to do it it's it's no. we we can we, we can enjoy the journey rather than spending so much time on the end destination that we miss everything along the way um, yeah absolutely because I, I don't want to be i don't i'm not and i don't want to become one of these people that's like hard sell and you must have it now yesterday and yeah. you know not at all if people want it they'll buy it and you know i'm happy for people to call up or send emails in and ask advice and you know i'll, I'll chat to people all day not all day but i'll chat to people and give them the, the advice that i think that uh, would would help them and point them in the right the right direction um but otherwise now it's just this this is business that's it that i enjoy and let's make it a there's like longevity it's a marathon yeah. not a sprint yeah, and you, you said to me before, before we went live, again, you were saying that you'll always deliver the right product for the person who won't try and upsell them on things they don't need. You'll be very true to, to, to their requirements and, and, and their needs rather than, as, as we might see, a sort of, I guess, a historic, typical salesperson trying to just flog as much as they can for the bonuses. It's trying to keep, you were saying, obviously, you, try and, you, you do keep everything very much to the, the services they need. Give them what they need. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if someone needs a solution that's going to, let, let's say for argument's sake, cost £100 a year, then I'm not going to try and sell them something that's going to be a £15,000 solution that they're never going to even use 10% of it. Yeah. I don't see the point. I really don't see the point of that, to be honest with you, but that's just me. No, and again, I think that's 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 absolutely the the, the way to do it, isn't it? Because it builds it builds the connections, the partnerships, the the, the brand loyalty and the, and, the, and the customer relationships, which is... The, the future proofing of your business 
Yeah, yeah I want to work with people long term rather than, yeah, hi, how's it going? Yeah, buy that, download it. You never speak to them yeah. again because, you know, they're not happy or they, they bought it, they're happy with it, but they're not happy with you. I'm after the, the, the long term strategy and the, the long term connection with, with each and every client if possible. Yeah, the, 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 the partnering as opposed to the just supply and off, off we go with Absolutely, them. yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay, right. As I, as I get to the end, this is something that I've, that I've been trying with, been playing with, and I'm going to try and share my screen and see if I can get it to you. Um, I, li I like to uh, play a little game, which is basically called Hire, Fire, or Partner, where I'm going to put, <laughs> up, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put up three people. Um, now, they're topical. Uh, one, one, well, two of them are in business, um, and, and obviously in politics and stuff like that. They're quite topical. Um, I'm not sure which way you'll go with this, but let me see if I can just share my screen so you can see it. Um, and I'll fire up the three people. There we go. That should come up. So hopefully, with a little bit of luck, you can see those three. <laughs> so we've got we've got we've got Bill Gates, we've got Donald Trump, and we've got Boris Johnson. So if you had to hire one to work in your business for you um, at a senior level, um, you had to fire one, and you had to 50-50 business partner with one. Who would you choose? Which would be which? Trump would be fired. <laughs> yeah. Boris hired Bill Gates 50 50. Yeah. Partner. Yeah. I, That's I, just pretty much a non, no star, non brainer, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I think so. Politics is always a difficult one. I think it gets people sort of torn, but I totally, I totally agree with the, with the Bill Gates side of things. You, you, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You'd, you'd have to partner with him. Um, Neil, Love let to me... sit in front of Donald Trump and do an Alan Sugar and say, yeah, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's himself. He started The Apprentice. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, his, his his show to begin with. Um, although I guess I guess there is there is a, a, a certain element of enjoyment about firing Boris Johnson as well. Um, but, and I, <laughs> no I, I, I'd say that with every politician. I, I sit on the fence, to be honest, with politicians. I'm kind of one of those people that sort of goes, well, they can all be a little bit bad as each other to a degree. But very um, diplomatic, Joel. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm unapologetic in my approach. I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> Neil, look, give, give us some, uh, give, give everyone your your website, your plugs, your social media stuff. Now I'll, I'll put it back up onto the onto the video as well, so people know where they can find you um, and how to get in contact with you. Okay, the the website is uh, www.chicanesecurity.co.uk. Um, it's anything from antivirus to internet security to firewalls to email protection, Office 365 protection, um, all the way through to pen testing and doing risk assessments on your premises. Um, and we, I actually work with a group of guys who will come along with me and we'll do physical security um, assessments. And that's like on your perimeter, your cameras, your access control and everything. We can do a, a bit of a job lot on there. I think we're going to um, do that. So everything's on there. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's a full mix of security. Um, I don't deal with security guards or anything like that. I have a thousand at my disposal and I don't want to do that again, if I'm honest with you. Um, but yeah, so give us a call. The, 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 the phone number's on the website. Um, have a look. Uh, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, I'm not so much on Twitter these days because it's just like a slag fest, if I'm honest with you, on Twitter. Um, so, but yeah, LinkedIn and Facebook, we're on there, regular blogs, it's normally weekly, but sometimes do a bit more depending on what's, what's coming up in the news and, and what's going on, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, so you're, you're pretty active, I was going to say, in sort of blogs and, get, and keeping up to date, which is great, but I'll, I'll certainly put everything up so people, if you, if, you, if you missed that, then you'll be able to find it in the comments, both on, on YouTube and Facebook and, and, and see all the links and everything to be able to um, find Neil and find Neil's business. So, um, And there's a few people that have jumped in that have sort of said um, uh, that they agree with you in terms of, of partnering Bill Gates um, and... and uh, Trump out, Boris in. <laughs> There's a few on the fence still, I think, on that. With the Trump Could you vote. imagine trying to partner up with Donald Trump? It would be a worst nightmare. Uh, and to I, partner with I, Boris, yeah. I think, would be very entertaining. I think he's, I think he's an absolute character, but um, yeah. nah. <laughs> it's, it's the 50-50 partnership that makes it difficult. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think it's that. But, yeah, you, you're, you're absolutely right. Bill Gates is definitely worth going. Um, Neil, thank you very much for taking the time to, to, to speak to me. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll put all of your details up. And, obviously, we will catch up again shortly. Um, yeah. But thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for tuning in and watching. Um, and I will be uh, announcing later this week who we've got on next week um, for the business meeting and, obviously, going through that. So thank you once again to everybody else. Neil, thank you very much. Um, thank you very um, much. And all the best, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. And this is this is the bit where I need to figure out how to just stop
the live, it's always my challenge. Let me just do it. 